What is up, guys? Welcome back to another video. We are on the final version of KDE 6. That's right. It is in the extra staging repo of Arch Linux at the moment. And I want to show you how to go and install it real quick because honestly, someone's going to ask, right? So first thing you need to do is to, I know I've been using Nano a lot and I do this for a reason. You're going to want to sudo nano into your Etsy pacman.conf, okay? Just like this. And then at the top, you're going to want to add a repo called extra staging. And the reason it needs to be at the top is because it needs to override everything below it. And doing that allows you to install KDE 6 final. This, once again, could be extremely experimental. Who knows? The final version could have loads of bugs. I don't know. I just installed it. I'm running it now. Uh, I was running it on NKV, which is the open source NVIDIA Vulkan driver, and I was running uh, the entire OS in Vulkan, by the way, using Zinc, and that was pretty cool, but it just didn't feel smooth, so I had to go and install the actual NVIDIA driver. So after you do this, you're going to hit Control s then X, you're going to do sudo hackman-sy to update your repositories, see? And then you're going to do sudo pacman-s plasma. And doing this will install plasma 6 because it is the top one. Now I haven't updated my arch in a while. And the reason I haven't done that is because I've had no reason to because I installed it yesterday. So yeah, I didn't really need to do anything. Uh, but as you can see, there's no watermark down here on the right hand corner. And if we go to about like this, you'll see that it says Plasma 6, QT version 6.6.2. Thank you for that. And this, this right here means it's a stable experience. Honestly, if it was 6.7, I would just, I'd be mad at them forever. I am running the 6.8 kernel RC5. And the reason I'm doing that is because it had the best compatibility with NVK. So I'm not doing a video about NVK because I literally can't. I can't record with OBS because there's a whole bunch of weird issues with it. And yeah, it's a freaking smooth, smooth, smooth. Not as smooth as GNOME 46, not by any means. Applications still take a little bit longer to open up, but it's much smoother than it was with uh, QT 6.7, that's for sure. So I don't know. What exactly is, well, I've already explained what's new multiple times. Let's go over it again. The appearance section is the first thing we'll open up. It's called quick settings. Then they moved the display and monitor up here, as you can clearly see. And there's your adaptive sync. It's either on or it's not on. And HDR settings will be here for whoever has HDR, whether you're on NVIDIA or AMD. I don't know if Intel has HDR support on Linux. I don't really care, honestly. Sound, keyboard, mouse, everything that is important is up here, which is different. You can also change wallpaper from here, which is nice. As you can see, I have some wallpapers. I'm not changing it because I like this one. This is the first time they ever had a nice wallpaper. Uh, default applications, most people couldn't find it. Email clients, one sec. So yeah, Dolphin Console, Archive Manager. True. Okay, I'm happy with that. Again, your wallpaper's there. You also have different accent colors up here, and they change a lot more than they used to. So if I apply that, I now have better accent colors. Um, I forget what all it did, like in a nutshell. Uh, I, I believe it tints stuff or does something. I don't know. Anyway, moving on. Um, there's a patch included if you use the Chromium browser that allows you to scroll at 120 FPS. I never mentioned that before, but that's pretty cool. What I do want to try doing right now is to go to appearance. I want to try and get a new, um, no items found, everything. Show all entries. Yeah, see, it's uh, let's try, let's try entering white, sir. Anything? No. So there's no global themes available currently right now. Uh, what about plasma style themes? Can we get new ones from there? Oh, yes, we can. Sumac Day Plasma. What the hell are you? 
Oh, it's ugly. <laughs> Do better. So, is it Sonoma? Yes, there we go. So, this is the one I usually use. So it's a really good theme, okay? Despite what they're like saying, it's, it's actually really good. Um, so there, we have the Sonoma Dark. Apply that. Oh, so much prettier. Look at that. That's... I like how it puts everything at the bottom. <laughs> Windows decorations. Uh, get new. We're also going to be theming this. Noma. No, it doesn't want to work. Okay. So this is a problem. There's a problem for one reason. Um, we're going to type white sir. And we're going to go here. And we're going to go here. Because I'm not too confident in typing, like, Sonoma and stuff. See, this guy has a ton of repositories. So now I can type Sonoma. And Sonoma KDE is here. So we take this bar right here. Then we open up console. Okay. And we're going to do git clone. Paste that in there. Then we're going to do cd m and right then we're gonna do install and i'm gonna check to see if it needs any actual commands itself okay so we want round done that's it so now that that's installed we should be able to close out all of this including the settings because we do want it to reload we should be able to go into global theme and application style that's not going to change. Plasma style. Lights there. Now windows decoration. Sonoma dark is there. Done. Uh, colors. Sonoma dark. Done. And look at that. That looks so much better. Icons. For one, we always do numic circle because it just looks better. And there's a lot of people out there that hate flat icons. And I don't understand those people. But it's if they want to hate flat icons... They have all the right in the world, too. That's up to them, okay? Yeah, I like this. This looks nice. All right. Now, um, a lot of people are still asking how I did my design on the other thing. First thing we're going to do is we're going to move this to the top. We're going to turn floating off, okay? Because there's no point in having it on. And we're going to move this down here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add a spacer. We're going to pull that spacer right there. We're going to remove the pager. And I'm also going to be... No, I don't want to remove the panel. I want to remove peek at desktop. There we go. Don't need that. Now this, this right here, we're going to go and we're going to add a new panel. How do we do that? How do we add a new panel? Can we? Oh, there it is. So they move the button out there. We want an empty panel down bottom. And we want to drag that in there. Then we're going to go edit mode for here. We're going to do fill with content. We're going to set as floating. Okay. I'm going to set this as translucent. Then I'm going to bump this all the way up to 54. And in doing this, that's it. Now we have a dock, but this is chunky. We don't want it chunky. So turn it to 34 at minimum. It still looks a little chunky to me. So actually I'm going to do 32. Yep, that's right. And now you have a dock and you have a normal bar. And to make things better, we're going to add a widget to it. And it's going to be called global menus. We're going to put that right there. And we're also going to add another spacer here in a second. Because I'm going to go to get new widget, download plasma widgets, and I'm going to grab a media widget. Uh, is it this? Is that what this is? Yes, this is. So I, I've only used this once on my other system. So there we go. And now I go to widget. Uh... Plasma music toolbar right here. And I'm going to place that over here for now. 
Okay. And exit out of this. We're going to enter again. We're going to add a spacer. Then we're going to move on to... Yeah, there we go. That's what I want. Okay. Global menus are over here. Okay. Right there. My media bar is here. And of course, I have everything else here. I still have to clean all of this up. This is so annoying. You have no idea. Uh, out of the box, I just find that Plasma is so bloated. Like, look at all of this crap. There's no need for it. So, panel spacing. Small, because Mac OS likes things compact. They don't like to waste space. I understand that. For this, always hidden. Go away. OBS sessions. I don't mind showing them when they're relevant. Screencasting. I don't care. I know that I'm screencasting. Volume's fine. Bluetooth is fine. Camera indicator. Go away. You don't have one connected. Display configuration. It doesn't need to be there. Disable. Keyboard layout. Disable. All right. Lock key status. Disable. Microphone. Always hidden because the icon is absolutely horrendous. Also, disk and devices. Disable. I don't need to see it. I know what I have connected to my computer. And the one that bugs me the most is the clipboard. Go away. I, myself like to have what the hell is this notification disable okay that's fine i'll leave that there i myself like to always have the cleanest look imaginable when it comes to a desktop environment because it means that um i'm not going to be bugged but i don't mind having my weather always shown oh i love this this is so stable because usually i'd run into some bugs by now lfx nova scotia check over the widget thank you and 20 fahrenheit do i look like i'm in a third world country no thank you it's minus seven right now this is clean for me this makes me happy okay another thing i don't like is i want the spacing to be small and the icon behavior everything looks good yeah all right so there we go. And I'm going to pin this. Pin. And once again, this is another test, by the way. Where's Dolphin? Are you Dolphin? You are Dolphin. Ugh. All right. Well, there we go. And you're right there. Now, the real test is, can we drag Discord once again uh, from Internet to here? Okay, so we can. All right. Oh, there was a little bug there. All right, so this means that we can go into gaming, right? And we can definitely go and drag Steam Runtime. Yep, okay. That's good. See? Things got fixed. This is very impressive. So far, I've run into none of the bugs that I've run into before, and that's saying a lot. Now, this video I did differently. Instead of recording at 25k bit rate, I've recorded at 50k bit rate. All right. And that ensures that you guys have the clearest view imaginable because I wanted to do that because I wanted to set up my system. This is a brand new install of Arch Linux, as I mentioned. And I wanted you guys to know what I go through and I wanted you to see some of the issues if there were any. And there's none, which makes me very happy. Now, as always, I'm going to grab both the Nabora and the Arch Linux Symbology SVGs. This was added by a pull request from me, by the way. I still love that fact. Why are you dark? You're not supposed to be. Is there another one? No, there's not. Weird, to say the least. Like, that's not supposed to be dark, but whatever. We have the Nabora one. We can go with that. All right. Configure application launchers. Choose. We're going to go to browse. I'm going to go over to my pictures. And I'm going to select this. And boom. Voila. This is what my Nabora KDE 6 desktop would look like. Anyway. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. KDE 6 
final seems to actually be stable now that it's on QT 6.6 .6 instead of being on QT 6.7. And that makes me ridiculously happy uh, to the point of glee because I was on this thing for months reporting bugs since it came out and enjoying it and just loving it all around. And then near the end, it got really slow and janky feeling. And I don't know what the hell it was. Even a reinstall felt horrible. And I'm glad that they fixed that. It's not GNOME 46 type speed because that's just a demon on its own. All right. Hopefully the KDE developers will implement whatever the hell GNOME did. But this, this is just, this is usable. This is good. This is fast enough. And I, I enjoy it a lot. And I hope you guys enjoy it too. Remember beginning of the video i showed you how to uh, add the repo i showed you how to update the repositories for it to show and i also showed you how to install it okay if you're on nvidia you have some extra steps that we're going to do here at the end of the video should have done it at the beginning of the video so you need to go and have ea that's very important you need the explicit sync packages oh i messed that up Ex Licit. Oh. I don't know how to spell right now. Whatever. It's going to do it. Yes, it is. Uh, totally probably not how you spell it, but whatever. Unless it is. You need to select one to three and hit enter. Don't remove any of the build, um, the required building stuff. And once you have this done, log out, log back in, or you reboot your computer, and you'll have one of the best Wayland experiences possible. And if you still have Wayland issues with this, you're going to have to wait until the next driver for those to get fixed, which should be coming any day now, according to an NVIDIA developer, unless they end up pushing it back to the middle of March, which I hope they don't do, because we need a new NVIDIA driver really bad. There's lots of weird issues. Anyway, don't forget to like, subscribe, share the video, subscribe share the video i know i said it twice um because i enjoy doing this and i like when other people enjoy what i make and i like this this is nice this is clean this works there's global menus at work did i mention subscribe bye everybody